which a person's eyes are violently poked out. I feel like a monster, one of the wretched, a part of the darkness we don't speak of. September the 1st, 2017, Michael Phelps made a devastating phone call to 911. He told the dispatcher he had woken up from a dream and found his wife dead on the floor. He thought he might be responsible. Tell me exactly what happened. I think I killed my What What do you mean by that? What happened? I had a dream and then I turned on the lights and she's dead on the floor. How? 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 I'm blo- I'm, I have blood all over me and there's a bloody knife on the bed and I think I did it. Stay on the phone with them. Get in there and get up, okay? I can't believe this. I can't believe this. When did you, when did you wake up to find this? I don't, I don't need to know what time it is. All right, stay on the phone with me, sir. I'm just going to ask you a few questions, okay? I'm getting some help to you. Are you with Are you with the patient now? Yeah, I can see you. Okay. All right. How old is the How old is the patient? How old is your? She's twenty nine. Okay. Is she Is she awake at all right now? What makes you think she's dead? Is she awake? She's not breathing. Okay. Oh my God. Okay, do you think she is beyond, beyond any help? I don't know. I don't, I'm too scared to get too close to her. Okay, just stay on the phone with me, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm here with you. I'm here with you. I'm so scared. All right, I've already sent the paramedics to help you, okay? I'm sending someone to assist you. Just please leave everything as you found it. Is there anything else we can do for you, sir? Where's, where's the knife right now? I saw the bed. I'm not next to it, so I'm not. I don't have a weapon on me or anything like that. Okay. When did when did you wake up? I don't know. I don't know. I took I took more medicine than I should have. What medicine did you take? I took, I took horse eating, cough and cold, horse eating, HCP, cough and cold, because I know it's to make you feel good, so a lot of times I can't sleep at night. Okay. And I took some. All right, now, what, is, what, are you sure she's not breathing? She's not moving. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay here with you. Okay, just, just, I, let's, let's at least see if she's breathing. Okay. So All right. Let's provide her. You, just, can you see her from where you're at? Yeah, it's so bad. There's so okay. much blood. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm gonna stay here on the phone with you until help gets there. Okay. Um. Just don't don't touch anything. Just look at is she is she breathing at all? Is her chest moving? Is anything going on with her? No. Okay. Well, we're gonna we're gonna leave. Blood is dried on me. Is she dried? The blood's not wet on me. The blood is dry. So I don't okay. Know when, I don't know what. I, oh God. Lauren was born on the 9th of June 1988 and she grew up with her parents and two sisters in Kentucky. They were a very tight-knit and religious family. Although Lauren was close to all her family, she had a close bond with her father Dale and her sister Beth. She loved her cousins and family was everything to her. While attending middle school, she had met Michael Phelps. However, they soon parted ways when he transferred schools and she moved to North Carolina. 
In her mid-twenties, Matthew reached out to Lauren through Instagram and they started to catch up. They soon started a long-distance relationship as he was living in Kentucky. Their relationship progressed fairly quickly and soon Matthew had moved down to live with Lauren. Her family were very supportive of the move. Apart from her father, who had this off-putting feeling about him. However, he put his feelings aside so he could support his daughter. The couple bonded over their faith and they were active members of the Hope Lutheran Church. One night, however, Lauren's parents became slightly concerned. As during a games night, Matthew had admitted that he'd been in a failed marriage before. They believed that he was too young to have been married and divorced already. However, they appeared the perfect couple and they got engaged in 2015. They tied the knot just one year later in 2016 but they incorporated their love of Star Wars into their wedding theme. Matthew, unlike Lauren, grew up in a more destructive family. He grew up mainly with his grandparents. His mum was around occasionally and he'd never met his dad. His mum remarried a couple of times, but he never bonded with his stepfathers and soon he started to act out. By the time Matthew had entered high school, he started to hang around with the wrong people and he started to abuse drug and alcohol. His drug of choice was chorosidin, cough and cold medicine. If you took too much of it, it would give you a high, and Matt abused this. Due to his addictions, his grandparents pulled him out of high school and put him into a private Christian academy so that he could get his life back on track. His grades started to improve and he went on to study at Clear Creek Bible College in Kentucky. Although Lauren's family were very accepting of Matthew, his family were not the same. His mum even wore a white dress to her engagement party to draw the attention away from her. Lauren would post a lot of pictures of her and Matthew on her social media and it appeared like they were the perfect couple. However, it was far from the truth. Lauren, who was a hard-working and independent woman, was working three jobs just to keep them afloat. She was working as an auditor in Quintels, a Sunday school teacher on the weekends and also worked for a multi-level marketing company called Sensi, where she sold candles online. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Matthew, on the other hand, didn't like to work and would find it very difficult to keep a job. He would sign up for a job, work there for a little bit and then just leave without any explanation. He soon signed up to be a pastor just to impress Lauren and worked for a lawn company on the side. Although he was in and out of jobs, Matthew would spend a lot of money on electronic and gaming equipment and this caused a rift between him and Lauren as Lauren had worked really hard and wanted to save for their family but he would spend all their money and ate into their savings. Matthew was also a very jealous person and although he would spend a lot of time with their neighbour Valerie and leave Lauren at home eating on her own, he wouldn't like it if anyone spoke to her at their church and he thought that everyone was after her. Lauren started to speak to her friends and family and tell them that she was very upset and wanted to leave him. However, she was very faithful to her religion and wanted to try and make it work. After only 10 months of marriage, on the 1st of September, around 1.10 in the morning, Matthew made a call to 911. He told the operator how he woke up from a horrible dream and found his wife dead on the floor. He thought that he might be responsible. He described how he'd taken chorosidine cough and cold medicine before bed. He said that it helped him to sleep and he'd woken up to this nightmare. His wife had been on the floor and had been stabbed 123 times in her arms, face and neck and some of the wounds were four inches deep. The police were quickly dispatched to the house and they rushed Lauren to hospital but she was pronounced dead on arrival. While investigating the scene, the police started to get suspicious as everything looked staged. The knife was placed nicely on the bed and the medicine was placed out nicely in the bathroom for them. He had no blood splatter on him and only had a few drops of blood on his shirt and shoes. This made them believe that he had changed before he called the police. Matthew was taken into custody and was charged with first degree murder. During his interrogation, he showed little emotion and no tears. While investigating the case, more and more evidence came to light that showed a different side to the story. During the search of the property, 
they discovered traces of blood all over the apartment, which showed that Matthew had cleaned up the scene before calling the police. They also discovered that Matthew kept a journal, and in there he discussed his insecurities of their relationship. He spoke about how they had been arguing quite a lot over the last couple of months, and they even had an argument on the day of the murder. They had been arguing as Lauren believed that Matthew was cheating on her and she was ready to leave. During their investigation, the police found out that Matthew had a secret Instagram account where he would show his obsession with American Psycho. He had an obsession with violence and twisted serial killers. He would dress up and take pictures of himself and express a darker side. He would even tell his friends he wondered what it felt like to kill somebody. A neighbor who had been friends with both Lauren and the defendant was also interviewed by Detective Jackson. She described what had initially been a close friendship with the defendant. He had revealed to her that he suffered from depression, but said that he hid it from Lauren. This neighbor also suffered from depression, and so they talked about this quite a bit. Over time, the defendant revealed a darker side. He spoke of suicidal thoughts which then progressed to ideas he had about killing. The neighbor described how the defendant would talk of these thoughts to kill in a rather nonchalant manner. She described an obsession that he seemed to have with the movie American Psycho, a movie about a serial killer who by day lives as a wealthy big city investment banking executive and by night commits gruesome and heinous murders. By July of 2017, major red flags started to appear to this neighbor and she began to withdraw from her friendship with the defendant. Two events occurred during that time period which she relayed to Detective Jackson. The first was centered around one of the defendant's social media accounts on Instagram. He had two Instagram accounts, one that he shared with his family and friends and a second that most of them didn't know existed. On this second account, the defendant called himself Marty Radical. The neighbor was connected with the defendant on this Marty Radical Instagram account. In July of 2017, he sent her a video through Instagram, a video she described as extremely disturbing in which a person's eyes are violently poked out. The defendant told her he thought the video was, in her word, awesome, which was alarming to her. The second and final event which caused this neighbor to end her friendship with the defendant centered around comments he made about a gun that she routinely carried. The neighbor has a concealed carry permit and regularly had her gun on her body. One day while walking their dogs, the defendant told the neighbor that he often thought about taking her gun and killing himself or killing someone else. On his last Instagram post, he wrote, Everyone thinks I'm a serial killer. Hashtag, I found an angel to kill. Brooke Truett, Matthew's ex-wife, also came forward to dispute the claims that she had cheated on him. Matthew had said that she had cheated on him when she went on a mission and had left him for another man. However, she said that was simply not true. They had a similar relationship like him and Lauren, where he would spend all their money and cheat on her. Lauren's family believed that she has been abused in the few months before her murder. They had noticed her changed and now regret not doing anything about it. On the night of the murder, Matthew had also searched how loopy does Christine make you? He had also searched if anyone else had got high on the medicine. This showed that premeditation was involved. He also had a record of abusing the medicine and blaming it for his actions. Bayer, the company that owned Christine, also made a statement They showed their sympathy, but said there was no evidence to suggest that the medicine was associated with violent behaviour. Matthew originally pleaded not guilty, but later changed his claims to guilty. He blamed it on drugs, drink and carelessness. Lauren and her family were planning for a trip to Disney World in October of 2017. A trip that Lauren was very much looking forward to and a trip that she would never go on. She was saving cash to reimburse her sister Beth, who had paid for the trip on her credit card. A few days before she was murdered, Lauren discovered that the defendant was spending money faster than she could make it. He gave up access to their bank accounts at that time. 
Without Lauren's knowledge, he then began to dip into the cash fund that Lauren had set aside to pay for that Disney World trip. When Lauren discovered that the defendant was taking this money, she felt betrayed <clears throat> and at a loss as to how to curtail the defendant's uncontrollable spending habits. On Thursday, August 31st of 2017, with this as the background, Lauren left her job as an auditor at Quintiles and went to her townhouse off the Tuxent Drive in Raleigh. She and the defendant had planned to have dinner that night and talk about the problems they were having. When Lauren got home, the defendant wasn't there. Earlier in the day, an AT&T salesperson had come to the door. It turned out to be a former coworker from a time when the defendant held the same job. The defendant decided to go sales pitching with his former coworker and he left the townhouse. Lauren wasn't happy with the defendant's decision to go out that night. As often happened in their marriage, he made decisions, small and large, without talking it through with Lauren. He wouldn't answer any of the many phone calls Lauren made to him that night. Lauren spent the evening finalizing an order from a party she had as part of her Sensi business. She talked and texted with her sister Beth and expressed how upset she was that the defendant didn't keep his word to have dinner with her that night. The last phone call Lauren had was with her sister Beth at 10 p.m. that evening. They spoke for approximately 27 minutes. The last text message Lauren sent was at 11.39 p.m. The evidence suggests that soon thereafter, Lauren went to bed. Her cell phone was plugged into a charger on her side of the bed and she was dressed in her pajamas. Just over an hour later at 1.12 a.m. on Friday, September 1st, the defendant placed a call to 911 to report that his wife Lauren had been stabbed to death and he thought he did it. His defence team tried to blame it on his troubled upbringing and also the fact that he had depression. Matthew was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. Do you understand your plea of guilty may impact how long biological evidence relating to your case will be preserved? Yes, sir. Do you understand that you're pleading guilty to one offense? That's the offense of first degree murder. It is a felony. It carries the maximum penalty of death or life without the possibility of parole. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Do you personally plead guilty to the charge I just described? Yes, sir. And did you in fact murder your wife, Lauren Guglemeyer Phelps by stabbing her multiple times? Yes, sir. He has now admitted that the cough medicine was a lie and he'd acted delirious on the phone so that he could get away with it. They also discovered he hadn't taken enough to reach toxic levels. He said he feels like a monster. I am sorry that I took away Lauren's life, a life that was deeply connected to so many people, her family, her friends, her church, her co-workers, and especially her nephews. And though I am the very least of these, I took her away from myself. This was a senseless, mindless act, and I regret every step that led me in that direction. Lauren was loving, caring, giving, hardworking, smart, fun, fashionable, and loyal. She was a daughter, a sister, a friend, a leader, a teacher, an aunt. I consider my own life worth nothing in the shadow of the tragedy weighing over my mind and on the hearts of so many people in this room today. I feel like a monster, one of the wretched, a part of the darkness we don't speak of. That darkness consumed me until I was blind to the path I had taken and death to, death to my own cries for help. That darkness caused me to do the unimaginable, to take a life that was not mine to take. No length of time will ease my inner sorrow or relieve me of the memory of such a godless act as my hands, which I thought incapable of doing, have committed. And I will have to live the rest of my life with these hands as a constant reminder. I hope my life will be an example of the consequences for those who think that drinking, drugs, and carelessness 
will only affect themselves and no one else. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever remains so with that shall he also reap. Because I now know the implications of my actions reach far more people than I realized, the people who were the most important in my life. And I am sorry. I am sorry to all those people. And even though I'll never be able to make up for the loss and the grief that I have caused all of you, I hope you will begin to see that I am doing everything I can from here. I'll show you that I'm sorry. He's now serving his time in North Carolina. Lauren's family all wore ribbons to the trial and blue t-shirts that said Lauren's light. Her mum described how she was beautiful inside and out and didn't know how they were going to live without her. I really would like to know why this happened. Why did Matt do this to my little Lauren? I think about what Matt has done all the time and it never goes away. Laura really, really loved Matt. He <clears throat> took her away from this family, from me and this family, and that really, really hurt us. <clears throat> How could he do this to us when we treated him like a son? Well, the detectives came into the house to tell us what Matt had done. <clears throat> The looks on their faces told everything, told us everything. The pain on their faces, I will never, ever forget it. Matt hurt Lauren's mom to no end. It, it is unbearable, the suffering he put her through. Lauren took Matt in and treated him like her own son. Because of what he has done, Lori wakes up at night screaming or crying in her sleep. All because of what Matt has done to Lori. Sure, it has gotten better, but still she cries while we're driving down the road, laying in bed while just at home or just in public. Lori was my baby, one of three. They are special to me. I miss Lauren sitting by my side in church. It is hard for me to go to church and not see her there. I miss her so much. She would come to the house and would watch football and racing with me. Sometimes she would just come to the house and fall asleep on the couch. Lauren wasn't always there for the games and racing. But just to spend time with me and her mom, Lori. Matt, you took this away from us. There is nothing I could do about it now. But one day, I will get satisfaction. I need. For the rest of your life in prison, it's going to be hard and be long. Matt, I know that you are not going to do well or be well received, nor do well. But this is just reward for killing my daughter, Lauren. And it does give me satisfaction knowing that your, your life is going to be hard every day a living hell. Thank you for watching. And if you like this one, be sure to check out this video, which goes through the puzzling reason why a young girl dug two graves in the forest. Thank you for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one. You call me a saint, but you know I'm a stranger, a willing and able.